Meanwhile, in the Smash Tower. All right, everybody, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. We're streaming live on Twitch. And thanks for those of you who are viewing the live premiere, perhaps. Happy Friday the 13th. We got a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of production to do here, so let's get moving. First, we're going to look at the sun on 193 angstroms to see a large tomahawk shaped coronal hole rotating into the Earth facing region here. We also see a crown prominence in the north, which we'll show you in the 304 angstroms view. And there's a southern view. It's about nine and a half hours of our local yellow dwarf. Here's the 304 angstrom view. You see that small crown prominence happening there, an indication solar activity is increasing. And for that, we thank you. Large filament in the northeast, as well as a bunch in the western areas. No sunspots, 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 71. Not as minimum as it has been, although we are looking to see the modern sunspot record broken in a couple of days. Here's 171 angstrom view on Helio Viewer, along with the magnetic environment. And that coronal hole is defined enough to be able to be seen in 171 angstrom. So significant coronal hole there rotating into the Earth facing area. Let's look at more data like the GOES electron flux, which is quite cratered actually, very low, especially when it comes to the GOES 16 shown here in blue, very low levels of electrons. And here's the relativistic electrons, which are also low, barely even at moderate levels. Here's the GOES magnetometer readings over the past three days, and we see some spikiness over the past six hours or so, as we see striations in the solar wind speed, and let's look at the magnetic environment real quick. Here's the Gong 2 data. This is one hour and 31 minutes old, showing the Earth solidly in the North Pole oriented portion of the current sheet depicted here in green. Expect to see that at least for another approximately 48 hours. Just keep in mind, magnetic environments can change with absolutely no warning. Next, we're going to move on to the real time solar wind. Phi angle currently at 257 degrees or so. Again, look for a 180 degree phi angle associated with that coronal hole magnetic connection. We see we do see a downtick in seismicity, but we see an uptick in volcanism. So a new volcano is on the list. We'll get to it in a minute. Solar wind density, 3.36 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed down to 387 kilometers a second there. And you can see it's had about a 70 kilometer per second fluctuation over the past 24 hours. And the ACE data agrees. By the way, it's only barely a week until the solstice, and we are doing we're expecting to do a live stream on Saturday night. So expect to see that an odd time for us to put down content, but it's probably gonna happen. So look for that coming on the solstice. If you want to calculate when the solstice happens for you, we've left it in the links below the video. Here's four hours of magnetosphere data, looking at the geospace magnetosphere movie, looking at the magneto hydrodynamic pressure, and we'll let that four hours of data play through. Shout out to University of Michigan. Let's advance that as we don't want the video to be too long. And next, let's look at ground geospace magnetic perturbations. We do see around 815 UT, we see a pulse coming out of the Pacific Ocean there, south of Hawaii. And we've been seeing ionospheric anomalies over the South Pacific, also near the equator. We'll get to it in a minute. We will show you the animation of the ionosphere. So there are the global magnetic perturbations, changes in the Earth's B field, otherwise known as Delta B. Indications of the South Pole creeping into the Indian Ocean and the main perturbations to be over the Canadian North Pole. Here's the ionosphere movie we were talking about. Here's six hours of data 
and you can see those sudden charge up, charge down anomalies happening in the South Pacific near the equator. Somewhat associated with the South Atlantic anomaly, and we won't get into the weeds about how that works at this time. KP index is at 1. And we're not going to look at cosmic rays today, although we did yesterday. Perhaps watch yesterday's video. And if you'd like to monitor cosmic rays yourself, we always link to the Network of Cosmic Ray Station site below the video. So we see a seismic downtick here, folks. We see some deep quakes, no large quakes, nothing over a 6 magnitude. A series of quakes around Alaska, including some deep ones like that one there. And this one here at 2.5 magnitude, 176 kilometers depth. Here's a deep quake at Dominica. That's only a 3.1 magnitude. And lastly, a deep quake coming in at Nicaragua about three hours before we made the video. It's currently 5.23 a.m. on Friday the 13th, where I'm located. Let's look at windy.com, who also has a great mobile app, by the way. And there is the pressure data, courtesy windy.com. We'll just let that advance for all you folks who are looking at pressure systems. For all you folks who are interested in what's going on above your head. And there's where things will be in about 24 hours. Let's talk about White Island. Uh, the White Island volcano has killed uh, about 16 people, I believe. And uh, if you are thinking of going on tour to a volcano which has a raised alert level, you may not want to go there as you could end up nice and dead or horribly burned and in the hospital as many, many tourists were. If you want to, if you want to follow the uh, situation at White Island, just check out NZ, I'm sorry, geonet.nz, which will refer you to this site. Probably the closest monitoring there. And the last update coming in only five hours ago. And we do see another volcano on the list here. This one is at Iceland. And uh, it's known as Bardarbunga. Bardarbunga Volcano, that's where it's located, by the way, on the insanely cool island of Iceland, one of my top vacation spots that I'm, it's on my bucket list. Anyway, this one going off, I don't see a flight level, but apparently there's been volcanic ash reported. Also, Kluchevskoy back on the list, producing a 20,000 foot ash plume there. Please don't pole vault. Kluchevskoy. Now, also, 7,000-foot ash plume there. Sakurajima exploding. 10,000-foot plume there. Sanjiang Api, flight level 8,000. Dakono, flight level 6,000. Popocatapetl, flight level 22,000. Sange exploding, flight level 19,000. Ravenador exploding, flight level 17,000. Sabankaya exploding, 26,000-foot plume there. Nevado State Chilean, we're unable to detect it. Please don't do a back handspring over Nevado State Chilean. Here's where stuff is in the solar system. There's where stuff will be in one week on 1220. And if you want to see what's going on above your head, by the way, Mars just rose. So if you've got a good eastern time horizon, if you've got a good eastern horizon, rather, uh, go check it out. It should be just over the horizon. For instance, if you're on the Atlantic coast, it's a great time to look at Mars against the Golden Sea. And don't take a golden shower. Are you familiar with our mission? Our mission is to assist study and report on the ongoing formation of a unified theory of physics to raise the awareness of the general public between the relationship of space weather and Earth effects. All your weather comes from space, folks. To connect and consult with media organizations to multiply our reach, hence videos like this one, to demonstrate cutting-edge proof of concept solutions to problems, such as growing tomatoes indoors, which we did last winter and we're doing again, to publish scientific papers in a multidisciplinary manner, including sciences, but not limited to sciences, such as spectroscopy, chemistry, astrophysics, health, wellness, longevity, cosmology, biology, magnetohydrodynamics, geology, etc. Also, to assist the humans by advancing the study of gold-pressed latinum, I mean, the study of predictive phenomenon in order to optimize value, reduce risk and liability, and save lives and resources, no matter what the adversity is. And lastly, to not be ossified in our beliefs and to treat those who are with love, respect, and inclusion to the scientific discussion. Follow us on other social media, please, such as BitChute, as our YouTube channel could be suddenly deleted without any warning or explanation. So this is a great place to archive your videos if you're worried about your YouTube channel being suddenly deleted. 
And if you just want to expand your horizons, we're up to 62 subscribers on BitChute, and thanks to all of those who have done so. We're also on various other social media, such as Instagram. Check out this moonset image I took yesterday. Check out this sunrise image I took yesterday on the Appalachian Trail near Lehigh Gap, Pennsylvania. It's a good one, and uh, we do create exclusive content on all platforms. If you're interested in where the lightning is, you want a real-time lightning map, check out lightningmaps.org. Next time you hear thunder, it could save your bacon. And let's move into the value-added services, such as Weather Underground's U.S. Doppler radar map. Wintery mix hitting Virginia. Not a nice day for an ice storm, is it ever? Significant snow over the north central U.S. And let's move on to the water vapor map here. As we have got to resubmit the form. Form follows function, folks. Next time you look at the Doppler and you don't know what you're looking at, check out the water vapor map. The water can't hide from the water vapor satellite, folks. Even if it's not condensed onto a cloud, it's still picked up by the satellite. And let's just zoom in on this East Texas Convergence Zone here, as I see massive pressure gradients happening there. And we put up a little bit of weather pornography every day on our channel to help people familiarize themselves with atmospheric physics. Massive pressure gradients there. So if you're flying a plane across Texas and Louisiana, expect some turbulence, to say the least. Next, let's look at nullschool.net to see the western jet streams. And there you see the scenario on the western jet streams. Looking a little more organized, although a big bend there over the Gulf of Mexico. And it looks like a powerful anticyclone there over uh, northeastern Alaska. Let's move around to the eastern world and keep this thing going, as there's still a lot of subject matter to talk about. Magnetic fields and distant galaxies and all kinds of other stuff. If you're into the mission, please support the channel via Patreon. That's patreon.com slash smashamash, the real source of funding for the channel, as YouTube pays us zero for various different reasons. Or if you don't like Patreon, you can do one-time donations on PayPal. Links to all that are below the video. Let's talk about David LaPointe's latest video which is causing rifts in the Electric Universe community. And let's just play a little clip here and tease our viewers to go watch it as he's, uh, in the last month, created a new type of ion thruster. This is under patent pending, so unlike the Primer Cube itself, you won't be able to download plans for this one. But this is a stationary magnetic field causing plasma to spin just as, as a jet of gases is introduced to it, and uh, let's just say it's interesting, and uh, let's just move on and, and laugh at the arguments that people are having as a result of this, because it's cute. It's cute, folks. So if you enjoy the content, please press like and subscribe on YouTube, and if you're not following on Twitch yet, check out twitch.com slash smashamash the current source of our live streams. Now I see one of our viewers put some information onto our whiteboard and uh, so if you want to go look at Bestoic's theory on explaining hydrogen genesis deep in the earth, uh, Bestoic says baby sun equals heliosphere slash magnetosphere slash radiation belt slash Electron availability slash possibly from sympathetic resonance slash portal black hole slash atom. Okay, that's not vetted, by the way, and I didn't write that there, but in any case, links to that whiteboard below the video if you'd like to put in your two cents or just straight up put graffiti on it. And thanks, Smash Team, for tuning into the Smash stream. Were you aware that Greta is Time's 2019 person of the year? Now, we prefer to follow people who understand atmospheric physics. Greta's parents have been abusing her since she was even younger than she is now and parading her around the world 
wearing Antifa shirts and doing other stupid things, claiming that she's able to see CO2 and odorless, colorless gas. Time Magazine. Time Magazine's Person of the Year. Congratulations to the UK electing a whole bunch of conservatives and attempting to get Brexit done. Because if at first you don't succeed in leaving a centralized bureaucracy, vote, vote again. Let's hope it actually happens this time. Again, congratulations, UK. We're pulling for you to get out of that centralized communist nonsense known as the European Union. Stop contributing because all it's doing is sucking your economy dry. Let's talk about the race to construct the first solar space station. Oh, yeah, you're worried about direct, directed energy weapons, folks? Well, check this out. China is building a solar power station, which will beam energy back to Earth. So <laughs> it's going to convert sunlight into RF electrical power and wirelessly transmit it into a steerable beam. I'm sure that'll freak you out. We left links to the article if you want to read it. There's also a, an American project doing a similar thing from some California university. Were you aware that some people with schizophrenia may just have a vitamin deficiency? Now, some people have problems with their ability to absorb vitamin B3, otherwise known as niacin, and it turns out that there's a significant portion of the human population who may be schizophrenic just because they need vitamin B3 supplements. Now, I used to be a psych major, which is why I find this interesting. And uh, let's just say perhaps it's better to give somebody niacin to cure their schizophrenia than a whole series of drugs that destroy people's lives. Let's talk about ancient artworks. Now, when I took art history in college, one of the things I studied was the Venus of Willendorf, which is a very important fertility fetish. Uh, it was considered to be one of the oldest pieces of art known to man. Let's talk about cave paintings. So, there's been a new cave painting discovered in Indonesia, which is pushing back the earliest evidence of human, human storytelling by more than 20,000 years. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe the human race is at least 400,000 years old, and probably much, much older than that, considering it appears that 400,000 years ago, very well-made megalithic structures were built. So let's just don't even go there, but links to this article from Cosmos Magazine, the world's oldest hunting scene discovered in Indonesia. Let's talk about neutron stars, or should I say quote and quote neutron stars. NASA's NICER delivers the best ever pulsar measurement. Now some neutron stars, because of the way they behave, are known as pulsars, and Let's don't get into the whole explanation of how everything works, but J0030 is uh, a very old, well-known pulsar, and uh, apparently it's got some hot spots on its surface, or some apparent hot spots. If you're wondering whether, whether or not I believe gravity warps space-time, the answer is no. And regarding magnetic fields running the universe, the answer is yes. And all of that plasma is orienting itself to the fields, not creating the fields. I don't know how else to say it. I could say it over and over again. By the way, if you want to look at the transients from J0030 plus 451, well, we've left links to the Neil Gorel Swift Bat Observatory here, the Burst Alert Telescope, and we look at this regularly. If you want to see where it is, just type, just uh, go to go to find, control F and type in J0030, and there you have it, right near the top of the list, that pulsar, as well as lots and lots of other astronomical objects, can be tracked for their X-ray transients. Let's talk about, I don't know what we're talking about, the way magnetic fields run galactic motion, not gravity, not inertia, not electrical current. Magnetic fields, folks, magnetic fields. Now, these are tough to measure, and this is the galaxy uh, M77, otherwise known as NGC 1068. Excuse me. Here's what it looks like invisible, and here's what it looks like with the field force lines drawn in. 
And this is, this takes a long time to put this these models together, folks, as it takes a lot of radio interferometry in order to do so. Perhaps read the article at universetoday.com about the way magnetic fields are running the universe. If you want to read more about M77, by the way, I use this for a CD label on my first audio release back around 1999 or 2000. Strangely, I just happened to have M77 as the CD label. And uh, I still have that graphic design information around. By the way, if anybody would like any graphic design done, just drop me a line at smashomash at gmail.com. I'll give you a good rate, especially if you have me designing something I'm interested in. Speaking of stuff I'm interested in, Cygnus A, the massive radio galaxy otherwise known as 3C405. We'll be making a t-shirt in the coming months. Early next year, expect it to come out. Just after the holidays, perhaps. And what we're doing is we're making fun of the naming conventions of things like galaxies. Now, Cygnus A is the strongest radio source in the entire sky, second only to the sun. And it's located, we expect it to be about 530 million light years away. In any case, look for the shirts to be coming soon and head to smashomash.org to see some new content coming out on the regs, as well as links to all the social media places and so on. There's going to be a forum coming. Thanks, Smash Team. Stay tuned for a bonus of feature in the form of one, the 94 Angstrom's view of the local yellow dwarf. Or a black screen depicting nothing. You decide. Will it be a black screen depicting nothing, or will it be the local yellow dwarf? Let's press reload. As we are getting this thing turned out, folks, it is about that time, and we don't have any time for black screens. We are out. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for everybody viewing the live premiere. Cheers. Best wishes. Enjoy the Friday the 13th. Don't accept any wooden nickels, and since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back and that atherosclerosis absent from your veins. So